I came up to him and I hugged him and he just broke into tears. And I says, what's wrong? He said, sister, I just got out of jail. You're the first person that hugged me in 20 years. I didn't know until they taught me what, how important touch and hugging was. Hi Tree Monsters, this is Meg Hadzinski reporting for Tree Monster TV. Today we're here at St. Augustine's Church on West 14th across from Lincoln Park. Today we're going to talk to Sister Corita about the Hunger Center and how she does it all. We're here with Sister Corita at St. Augustine's in Tremont to talk to her about the activities she has within our community, more specifically what's going on here tonight. Sister Corita, we have a fish fry here tonight, I hear. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we certainly do. We have a great food here tonight, as we always do, and we have uh, uh, cod, deep fried cod, we have tilapia bo uh, boiled, and we have salmon, and a lot of people love the salmon, let me tell you. I believe but, it. With, with that, we have uh, macaroni and cheese, we have cabbage and noodles, and we have, because this is a Slovak Polish neighborhood, we have pierogies. That's awesome. <laughs> and then, who's working in the background? Who do you have here cooking the food, serving the food, the smiling faces that create this beautiful community? Those are all my volunteers, and they come every single day to work and uh, cook for the poor and for the homeless, okay? They, they do it as a volunteer, and they do a marvelous, marvelous job. Um, the homeless people tell me that this is the best food in the city, and I believe it's true because they do such a wonderful job. We're here with volunteer Sam Payton here at St. Augustine's. He's going to tell us a little bit about his experience volunteering here in the community. Sam, how long have you been a volunteer here at St. Augustine's? I've been volunteering at St. Augustine's about 17 years here in Tremont, a wonderful place. I fell in love with it. Like I said, um, I started from community service, and um, we, we do rummage for people. We feed people all through the month. The first week of the month, we clean one of the finest hunger centers in Cleveland, Ohio. We clean it in some restaurants, and um, wonderful place. We're across from Lincoln Park. And what does a typical volunteer day look like for you? You know, what time do you get here? What kind of prep are you doing? Oh, uh, man, I'm an early bird. I get here at 7. We have walk-ins. You, you don't have to have no paper. Just come on in, and i suit you up and get you busy. That's awesome. <laughs> and then tell us a little bit about Sister Corita and the community she's created here. Togetherness. Very firm, very strong. Just don't be St. Augusta's here. She tell us to take that all over. So what is, a, for a fish fry like today, what is you know, the prep look like? How early are these people getting here? You know, how many people are here helping? What does that look like? Well, we always know how, don't know how many are going to help because it's a volunteer thing and mm -hmm. it depends on who comes in. But we started preparing for this uh, today about 1 o'clock after we had finished serving uh, breakfast and lunch to the homeless, okay? So we started getting everything together and started cutting up potatoes and having, we have fresh potatoes that we use for french fries and uh, getting the fish ready and everything ready for it. And then um, they just come in and they come in and help us serve, take care of the people, uh, clean the tables, and um, they enjoy it as much as I do and the people. I believe it. From the moment we walked in here, everyone was hugging, laughing, there's smiles all around. That's definitely a testament to the community you've created here. How long have you been involved with St. Augustine's? Oh, I've been here for 20, 27 years now. Wow. <laughs> Pardon me, 47 years. <laughs> Not 27, 47 years right now. I keep forgetting because it's been a wonderful experience all the way through. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. And how did you first get involved? With the Hunger Center or...? No, I first got involved here at St. Augustine's because I was um, got my master's degree in working with the deaf. And the deaf community was here. And they were looking for someone who would be glad to come and work with the deaf. So I came here to do that. I had to leave teaching to do that. That was heartbreaking because I loved teaching. I was a second grade teacher, enjoyed every bit of it. 
and it was so hard to leave. But then I have just fallen in love with this place and the people here and everything. Um, so it, it's, it's paid itself off. That's beautiful. And what is St. Augustine's and the community you've created here, what does that mean to, uh, uh, to Tremont and the community as a whole? Well, I think we're very important to the Tremont. I really do. You know, when um, about 30 years ago, uh, they didn't want the Hunger Center here. Okay, it was not in my backyard, and I had tried to open a place for women, and they know we cannot do that. And so when I sat down and thought about it, I said, what am I going to do to help people to understand these people who come here? And so we started sending the homeless out to whatever the Tremont was doing, when they were doing the uh, Arts and Cultural Festival, whenever they were doing the Taste of Tremont, anything that they do here in the summer and the winter and the fall, we go out and help them and set up and clean up and tear down. And that changed the whole neighborhood's attitude toward the Hunger Center, mm -hmm. it truly did, to the fact that right now they call me and say, can we have the homeless here on this day to help us with this, that, or the other thing. And not only that, for the first time in the last two years, they have been supporting us financially and with food, which they would never ever do before. So it's been like a miraculous thing. Yeah. It's wonderful. And uh, people come in, have their dinners, we talk with them. I go around from table to table uh, hugging. And I have to tell you, if I have time, how I learned to hug, okay? I had a gentleman that friend of mine that came in to see me one day when I was down here in the Hunger Center. And he came in and I gave him a big hug and a smooch and we talked and talked and talked. And one of the uh, homeless guys came up to me, he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, I'm angry with you. And I says, why? And he says, because I've been coming for three years and never once did you greet me the way you greeted this man. And I looked at him and I couldn't hug him. Yeah. I couldn't, he had bugs in his hair, his nose on his, I mean, it was terrible, three, four coats on, yeah. <laughs> and he stunk, he really did. And I said, well, one of these days, <laughs> one of these days, okay? And he would come up to me every day, is today the, no, not today. <laughs> then we got a real hot day in August, okay? okay? And I was as frustrated as I could be with everything going on, and he came up and he said, is today the day? And I said, well, why not? And I gave him a huge hug and a kiss. And honest to goodness, I can never explain how it opened my heart, okay? And ever since that day, I have been able to hug any one of those gentlemen that come in, and I found out how much they love it. Because one day I had someone walking down the walk, the, the ramp, and I came up to him and I hugged him, and he just broke into tears. And I says, what's wrong? He said, sister, I just got out of jail. You're the first person that tugged me in 20 years. I didn't know until they taught me what, how important touch and hugging was. Thanks for joining us. If you're looking to get involved with St. Augustine's or donate, you can visit their webpage, www.staugustines-west14th.org, or just come here right to the Hunger Center located on West 14th across from Lincoln Park. This has been Meg Hadzinski, Tree Monster TV.